In the summer of 1997, Israel Kamakawiwo Ola, already celebrated as one of Hawaii's most beloved singers, passed away due to respiratory failure. At the time, he was beginning to witness the success of his rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. At the time of his death, Israel was a morbidly obese 38-year-old. His story is always told as the journey of an immortal legend, whose unique voice and innate talent redefined Hawaiian music. Come with me to dive into the life and career of this icon, from his first chords to his last days. Israel Kamakawiwa Ole, or simply Iz, as he was affectionately known, was born on May 20, 1959, in a simple neighborhood in Honolulu called Kaimuki. His parents loved music, sang in church, and at house parties. He started playing the ukulele at the age of six, but only took music more seriously a few years later when he and his older brother Skippy began playing for tourists on boats. In the early 70s, his parents got jobs at a popular music venue, which put him and his brother in contact with important Hawaiian musicians of the time. In 1973, at the age of 14, Israel's family moved to Makaha, a quiet town on the west coast of Oahu, 35 miles from Honolulu. Despite initially resisting the change, he ended up liking the place for its more relaxed atmosphere. There, he met Jerome Coco. The two skipped school one day, played the ukulele together on the beach, and quickly became friends. By 1975, Israel, Skippy, Jerome, and two more friends formed the group Makaha Sons of Ni'ihau. They chose this name in honor of an island inhabited almost entirely by native Hawaiians living in a traditional way, a place with which their family had strong ties. At that time, in the 70s, the youth of Hawaii were diving deep into the roots of their culture and language in search of a musical expression that went beyond the simplistic hula songs intended for tourists. In this cultural revival movement, Israel's group stood out, embracing melodies that spoke of the true essence of the islands. He drew attention for his vocal talent and his stature, a tall guy with long black hair and a physical build that resembled a sumo wrestler. In total, Makaha Sons of Naihau recorded 21 albums and won the main music awards in Hawaii. Despite the success with the group, Israel felt the need to explore new musical directions and express his artistic vision in a more independent way. He decided then to pursue a solo career, a significant change that would not only shape his own legacy, but also have a lasting impact on Hawaiian music. If you're just discovering Israel now, you might think he's one of those one-hit wonder artists, but I assure you, he's not. I recommend the complete discography of this great artist. Each album is a treasure, However, there is one song that marked his name in history. Somewhere Over the Rainbow, his version of the famous song sung by Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz, was recorded in 1988 and became a hit years later with appearances in movies, TV, and commercials, making him a legend. The story behind its recording is iconic. In an interview given to NPR, sound engineer Milan Bertosa reported that in the early morning of 1988, precisely at 3 o'clock, he was about to close his studio when, out of nowhere, he received a call. It was a client asking if Israel could come over and make a last-minute recording. After a brief negotiation, Milan allowed it on the condition that he arrived within 15 minutes. Upon arrival, the engineer recalled, and in walks the largest human being I had seen in my life. Israel was probably like 500 pounds, and the first thing at hand is to find something for him to sit on. Then I put up some microphones, do a quick sound check, roll tape, and the first thing he does is somewhere over the rainbow. He played and sang, one take, and it was over. Milan remembered the Hawaiian icon as a sweet, well-mannered, and kind man. The next day, he made a copy for Israel and kept the original recording. He liked it so much that he said, that night, something inspired him. It was as if we had captured a unique moment. Just a year after recording the song, Israel had a heart attack. Weighing about 300 kilograms, he had problems with obesity, just like the rest of his family. His brother Skippy died at the age of 28 due to obesity-related problems, and so he knew he would probably have a short life. To producer John DeMello, Israel once said, I was scared when I lost my mother, my father, my brother, my sister. 
I guess this is gonna sound kind of weird, but I'm not scared for myself for dying, because I believe all these places are temporary. This is just one shell, because we Hawaiians live in both worlds. It's in our veins. When our time come, don't cry for me. Plant a tree in the middle, where they play soccer. Kind of small, then I'll grow big. In 1990, Israel released his first solo album titled Ka'anoi, which included a more upbeat version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. The original 1988 version was only included in his second album, Facing Future, which is still the best-selling Hawaiian album of all time. This record only achieved platinum status in 2005, after selling over a million copies, being the only Hawaiian music album to achieve such a feat. Its sales are high not only in Hawaii, but all over the world. The album also has other famous songs like White Sandy Beach and Hawaii 78. The latter carries a political message. Israel fought for the rights of his fellow countrymen and for Hawaii's independence. He saw Hawaiians as second-class citizens in their own land, harmed by the tourism industry. In the lyrics of Hawaii 78, he expressed his thoughts, speaking about how his ancestors would be sad to see modern Hawaii. There's a land that I heard of Despite his innate talent, success, and all the affection of his countrymen, the end of Israel Kamakawiwa'o's story is not a happy one. Since adolescence, he struggled with obesity and, in the 90s, his health problems made him miss shows and made his travels difficult. Over time, even simple movements became complicated, although he maintained his ability to sing and play the ukulele until the end. In the end, years of poor diet and the use of drugs and alcohol took their toll. As a young man, Israel loved music and didn't care much for the obligations of life. According to his friend Del Beasley in the book Facing Future, he hardly ever showed up at school and spent hours on the beach accompanied by his musical instrument. He liked parties and this sometimes caused problems, especially with his older brother. Israel had problems with drugs and was even arrested for assault a year before his brother's death. Even after getting married and having a child, he continued to go out at night and return in the early morning, which worried his wife. After suffering a heart attack in 1989, he stopped drugs and alcohol for a while, but relapsed in 1996. On June 26, 1997, Israel passed away at the age of 38 in a Honolulu hospital. The official cause of death was health problems related to obesity, which led to respiratory failure. He had been using an oxygen tank for some time and needed a crane to get up and down from the stages. All of Hawaii mourned the loss of one of its greatest icons. The radios received many calls from crying fans, the flags were flown at half-mast, and he became the third person to be laid in state at the Capitol, a true honor. Israel's friend, Del Beasley, and producer John DeMello were present. John DeMello recounts, And going down the coastline, all the big semi-trucks on the island of Oahu had their air horns blowing and from the ocean we could hear the echo, the bounce off the mountain ranges. Del Beasley also remembered, in the old days people would wail when the Moi or King passed away and cry. And that's really what it was. This whole island came together just to say goodbye to this one Hawaiian. But I tell you, he would have been laughing. After being viewed by tens of thousands of people, Israel was cremated and his ashes were taken to Makwa Beach, where they were dispersed in the water. The scenes of the procession were included in the posthumous music video of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. The last 25 years have made it clear that his memory will remain alive, and his music, with that unique voice and the sound of the ukulele, will always be felt in some corner of the world. So, did you already know the story of Israel Kamakawiwo? How many songs of this Hawaiian icon do you know? Leave your answer here in the comments. Also, leave your suggestion for the subject for the next video. Thank you very much for accompanying me to the end and see you next week.